How does your computer put on such a fantastic light show with all those LEDs? How do the lights fade and change colors? Is there a legion of pixies with an amazing array of dimmer switches coordinated precisely so that your friends are impressed with your RGB lighting? Well, the reality is a bit less fantastical, but with the recent unionization of pixies, we have the much more practical pulse width modulation. So what is pulse width modulation? PWM varies the perceived power going to an electronic device by very quickly turning the power on and off. The perceived output is changed by varying the duty cycle. Now, the duty cycle isn't the time it takes your dog to spin around before going about its business, but instead how long the signal is turned on versus turned off. This means with the duty cycle of 50%, the signal is turned on half the time and off the other half, whereas a duty cycle of 100% means the signal is always on. An important part of the duty cycle is the switching frequency, or how fast the signal is turned on and off. For instance, turning an LED on for a second and then off for a second would be a duty cycle of 50%, but the LED won't be half as bright, it'll just be annoying. To make the LED appear dimmer, the on-off switching has to be faster than the flicker fusion rate, or how quickly a light has to turn on and off to be perceived by the brain as being continuously on. In humans, the flicker fusion rate is around 18 times per second. Typically, LEDs controlled by PWM will be switched on and off over 100 times per second, or 100 hertz, by using a duty cycle of 25% at 100 hertz. It means that the LED would be turned on and off 100 times per second, but the duration of each on cycle is only a quarter of the time, making the LED appear 25% as bright. And, as you probably know, PWM is also useful for quiet and efficient PC cooling. Older fans controlled from the motherboard had very poor speed control, meaning that the fans would run much faster and louder than they actually needed to be at that point in time. PWM fans, however, allow for the motherboard to easily control the fan speed, giving low, quiet fan speeds when just browsing the web to gale force winds when you're playing Crisis. So can we dim a light or change a fan speed without using PWM? Well, older systems might use DC voltage control. This works by changing the resistance in a circuit. The more resistance, the less power transmitted to the fan or light. Since there is no switching, DC control has the advantage of smoother power delivery, but they often don't offer the same range of speeds that a PWM fan does. Not to mention that any power that isn't being used gets wasted as heat, which is why old dimmer switches use the same amount of power no matter how much light they made. It has been said that PWM monitors can cause eye strain from the constant flickering, although makers of DC controlled monitors seem to pretty much be the only ones that are saying this, so trust them if you want. Beyond changing how much power is going to something, PWM can be used to transmit data between two devices, where pulses of different lengths represent the data being transferred. This is how your TV remote switches channels, and how data is transmitted from cell towers to your phone. PWM is also used in some audio amplifiers, making them extremely efficient. The typical efficiency of a non-PWM amplifier is between 25% and 50%, while a PWM amp can reach efficiencies of 99%. The cool operation and high efficiency makes these amplifiers popular in car audio, so you can bump T-Swift all day without, you know, turning your dash into a frying pan. TunnelBear VPN allows you to tunnel into 20 different countries, giving you the access to browse the internet from that country. And they have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and they also have a Chrome extension. Just choose a country in the app, turn TunnelBear on, and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to your new location. When you do turn TunnelBear on, two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched to one in that new country that you chose. TunnelBear lets you bypass all the annoying details that typically come with using a VPN for personal use. There's no need to mess around with port configurations, DNS, or any other router settings. TunnelBear handles all of that, and it's just, it's just simple. And they also have a top-rated privacy policy and do not log user activity. 
You can try out TunnelBear VPN with 500 megabytes for free, no credit card required. And if you do choose to get a year of unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. All right, guys, if you like this video, like it. If you dislike this video, dislike it, get subscribed. Let us know in the comments down below if there's other stuff you'd like us to cover. And check out uh, this video, which is Dennis's third favorite channel super fun. Not his first, not his second, very specifically his third, and there's very good reasons for that.